Here it is the next day, and everything's more or less okay. Didn't come off, didn't shrink or anything, except there are these weird lines that have appeared. Horizontal going all the way across. And they're mirror images, like here it's raised and here it's shrunk. So, it seems like it was something in the veneer itself, like for maybe when it was processed. So remember, like this she was on top of that when it was in its, the stack when it was cut. And I folded it like that, so it's like a mirror image of these weird lines. And there's, uh, they extend up through here too. Hopefully, I can just sand them out. They're not that deep or anything. Otherwise, yeah, it looks okay. So now, uh, the next fun challenge is to cut out the holes for the controls. You can see where it's ripply. You can tell there's only one right there. Just basically take a knife and start nipping away at it. Larger and larger until I get close to the edge, and I can use some sandpaper. Bigger challenge will be trimming it all around the sides. Because that's going to be a very visible line, so i got to be very careful. So, just again, a very sharp knife, straight edge, very slow. I'm not going to try to get a perfect edge in the first pass. I'm just going to get a lot closer, and then just continue to nip away at it. I have a little block plate I may use, too. To help me get this perfect. Now, this would all the way to the edge. It would be a whole lot easier, but there's a little shelf here, so I can't... Uh, Okay, just to slice it off along the edge, it actually have to be a little bit careful. Trim it off right around here. Here's how one of the sides turned out. It actually turned out to be fairly easy to bend and contort the veneer to wrap all around that curved surface. I think between the veneer softener and the heat of the iron just made it a lot more pliable and workable and I was able to bend and wrap it around. A little bit of a gap in here, a little bit chipped out here, but I can fill that in with some wood filler. I think it'll look just fine. And uh, now I'm going to move on to seeing if I can steam out some dings, in particular this one right here. going to take a uh, damp cloth and the tip of the hot iron and see if I can get those wood fibers to raise back up. Now I'm flattening out that area that got a little bit of water damage. I uh, had removed this runner earlier where the feet go. I'll probably end up replacing both. Rather than try to find one the same thickness as this, I'll just knock this one off and put two new ones on with new timber. And uh, the veneer here was separating a little bit, bulging out a little bit too from uh, the underlying plywood. Must have gotten damp and it swelled up a little bit. So what I did is I soaked the same veneer softener into this that I used on this burled uh, veneer on the front of the cabinet to soften it up and uh, remember that has some uh, diluted glue in it as well so uh, after I squeeze the heck out of this it not only flatten it out but it should uh, bond those layers those uh, layers that were separating back together all right that ought to do it now to uh, countersink those wood screws, I just used an old trick of taking a large drill bit, 3 8 inch in this case, and wrap some tape around it as a dump stop. And then I'll just throw some of these felt pads over the screw heads like so. Alright, now to repair the damage on the top. 
Luckily, the only damage to the cabinet is just this back corner here. A little piece of veneer missing. Over the years, I have salvaged veneer from some cabinets that were beyond repair, and I think I'll use a piece something like this. Now, I know it doesn't look much like this, but that's because it's still got the old finish on it. But if you look on the back, I think you can see it is reddish. This is actually mahogany, and I think the grain will match quite nicely. And I'm also a bit lucky here in that this is already kind of feathered. That's exactly what I want. I want this to be tapered down. And I want it to be irregular. I don't want to like, cut this off a square because it will be a really obvious joint there. I want it to be kind of an odd random angle and feathered. I'm going to cut off a piece of this oversized, put some glue down, and mash the heck out of this down into that. After the glue sets up then, I can simply sand this and this should feather in so closely you'd only notice if you got up real close to it. When I examined this salvage piece more closely, I discovered that it's only about half the thickness of the original, so that's just not going to work out too well. So I went back to the scrap heap and found another piece that is the same thickness as the original. And I carved off a piece and sanded off the edges to make them nice and thin. So I'm going to get some glue down in here now, because some of this is loose. And get this positioned something like about that. Clamp the heck out of it. And when the glue just dried, I will sand this down carefully and hopefully be uh, very hard to detect. Yeah, I think that turned out all right. I'll know better once I start applying some new finish, which is the next step. In particular, I want to seal the wood. In the past, I've used lacquer sanding sealer. Works fine, as does shellac, as does brushing shellac. And I just happen to have a nearly full can of this and some foam brushes, so that's what I'm going to go with. You can also get shellac in dry flake form and mix up a fresh batch with alcohol yourself. By the way, it works great. Now notice I have not sanded this cabinet and I won't until I put on the shellac and even then I'm going to do a minimum of sanding. I can uh, confidently say the biggest mistake I made when I started refinishing cabinets was sanding way too much and using way too many grits. Ideally, this is all I'm going to need, 320 grit and it'd be a minimum of sanding. After all, this cabinet was in pretty decent condition when I started. Veneer is tight and smooth. No reason to sand this. When I seal it, it may raise the grain a bit, and that's why I'm going to sand it then. And then I'll grain fill, and then seal it again, and maybe a little bit more light sanding. And then start putting on the finish coats. Here's a closer look at the front after one coat of shellac, which Brings out the grain nicely so we can see better now how pretty it is. But it also shows how rough that surface is. Very deep pores throughout this grain. You can see it even better over here where I did a little light sanding. So you see all that white? Those are all pores. I want to fill that in. I want to get what they call piano finish. Nice, perfectly smooth. So I could do that by coat of shellac, sand, coat of shellac, sand, coat of shellac, sand, and keep doing it until there are no white spots remaining. But what I'll use is grain filler, which is made just for this application, which is a really uh, fine grit suspended in solvent with some color added. I'll use the stuff I've got for mahogany, which is really dark, basically black. But before that, I think I'll do one more round of the shellac. Get some of these smaller spots filled in. After a round of sanding, put on another coat of shellac, and now you can begin with the fun. The grain filler. So always using Constantine's. Gotta mix this up really good. 
And then I will take a cheapo chip brush and put it on. Work it in real good. Wait for it to dry to a haze and then scrape off the excess with an expired credit card. And eventually I'll do this with the whole cabinet, but I know it's going to take multiple passes to fill in these deep voids, so I want to get going on this first. Drain filling is coming along nicely. This is the last side I need to do. Finished with the burl, the near, and the top, and the other side. This is done. I'll let it set up good for a couple days and examine it closely. See if there are any spots that are unfilled. Go back over them if I need to. Then a little light sealer coat of shellac, light sanding, and it all looks good at that point. I will proceed with the toner lacquer. Uh, of course, that burl does not look very mahogany, so what I will do on that is mask off the rest of the cabinet and hit it with some Mohawk Red Mahogany slash Cherry Ultra Classic Toner and then go over the whole thing with some brown mahogany toner which is brown with a bit of red in it. So I think is pretty much what the original was. Experience has taught me that generally for any mahogany cabinet you don't want to use the red mahogany toner. It'll turn out way too red. Let's go with the brown mahogany toner. It's already reddish to begin with. And that toner has some more red in it. And that combined with the brown gives it a nice color. The grain filling is coming along nicely. I'm just doing the last of the surfaces. I already finished with that burled near on the top and the other side. Scraping off the excess. I like to keep some of the excess on the edge and go back over it looking at various angles in the light. Make sure it's all working good. And I'll let this dry for a few days and make sure it's completely set up. I'm going to put on another sealer coat of shellac. Now you may be thinking that, uh, hey, that's. Oh, the walnut doesn't look too much like mahogany. Well, yeah. <laughs> so what uh, I propose to do is correct that with some toner lacquer, which will be my next step after I finish up with all the grain filling. I will go over this with some uh, Ultra Classic Toner Red Mahogany Slash Cherry, I think is the color, which is very red. And then I'll go over the whole thing with brown mahogany. I've learned from experience that the red mahogany toner is very, very red. More red than I would typically use on any vintage uh, cabinet. They did not look that red originally. Brown mahogany is actually a combination of red and brown and is very close to the original look. So I figured lay coating with red on this will get it more in line with mahogany and then go over the whole thing to tie it all together. And that should turn out pretty nice. After finishing up filling the grain, gave it a coat of lacquer sanding sealer, and I just gave it a light coat of Mohawk Ultra Classic Toner Red Mahogany Cherry. And that should be it for the burl uh, in terms of color. Uh, next up, I will put on a light uh, clear coat and then decals and then a series of more coats, probably four in total. 
clear gloss lacquer. As for the rest of the cabinet, that's going to get brown mahogany. And I think between the original color of the walnut getting red and then the original reddish color of the mahogany getting the brown mahogany toner, it should be a pretty good color match. But even if it's not perfect, that's fine. The original wasn't either. I mean, this is clearly supposed to stand out as being different from the rest of the cabinet. And the reason I want to use clear gloss versus semi-gloss is there's flattening agents in the semi-gloss, which can give you a nice look if you don't want some super shiny. However, I want to put it over decals, and I, don't want the, I want the decals to really pop, so I want to use clear gloss on that. Uh, I suppose I could use semi-gloss on the rest of the cabinet, but that might also be a bit jarring, so I'm just going to go gloss over everything. All right, after the grain filler, I went over with lacquer sanding sealer and then cleaned up all these interior edges around speaker grill and vent holes on both sides and painted them with dark brown water-based enamel. And then I masked off the cabinet except for a strip up here, which is the edge of the plywood top, and around the bottom, which is some sort of secondary wood, and sprayed them with brown mahogany toner but pigment based rather than dye based and then I masked that off and masked the front burl off and went over the whole body of the cabinet with brown mahogany toner black or dye based and then just a light clear coat now I'm getting ready to take off all this masking now that I'm done with all the toning, it'll just be clear lacquer from here on out. And to finally see how the girl will look next to the mahogany. And then I'm going to do the decal application. Be a little nerve wracking. I got a bunch of decals to put on, and I want them all to be perfectly aligned. All right, wasn't expecting a perfect color match, but I think that looks all right. So, just a little bit of red cherry toner here, and brown mahogany on the rest. I'm happy with that. As you can see down here, the secondary wood is toned rather dark and opaque, so you don't see the joints on it. Experience has taught me not to use blue painter's tape. A few times I tried it, there's something about the solvents in this, in this lacquer that uh, really stick to the adhesive. So when you take it off, it tends to take off some of the lacquer with it. But the green works just fine. Alright, so I'm quite happy with the way that turned out. The rain is filled in nicely, an even color coat. My repair is barely visible. Only problem seems to be is that when I put in uh, the grain filler, it, it darkened up the joint a little bit. But uh, right here, this is actually more noticeable, and that was just a, a ding in the wood. So you get the really dark uh, grain filler, and when it fills in any voids, they really stand out. But hey, for a really quick repair, the color and the grain is certainly a good match. I just could have done a better job on the actual seam. So, what about those decals? Well, first I gotta say, these would not exist if it wasn't for the help of Phil Nelson and Solid Design. Phil and I worked to get uh, properly scaled 
and accurate artwork and solid design actually made the decals for us. As you can imagine there's a setup fee but once you have that the more you make the lower the cost. Oops. And here are the decals. Now for this one I will not need the channel numbers because I will have a plastic plate on here but I will need the Admiral top center and then um, channel sharp tuning I think is a decal of course border by the plastic then we got off volume focus contrast and brightness and horizontal vertical hole so what I've done in the past to get the decals correct is I take a string and I get a perfectly level and tape it on one edge, pull it really tight, level across, tape it on the other as a reference line. And I'll put that like just above where the top of the decal should be. And then I can position each of them and I know that vertically they will be the same height and they won't be uh, they won't be unlevel, they'll be level with the reference line. And uh, centering them in each opening, that I think I can eyeball well enough. Here's what that plastic channel plate will look like. Something like that. So while your gizmo will, of course, be on the inside so you won't see that. But before I do that, I will let this lacquer sit for a few days to really outgas. And once the lacquers are on and applied and dried, clear coat the whole thing a bunch of times. Right now it's pretty darn smooth. It's a little bit of fuzz from some fine bits of dust that settled on the lacquer while it was curing. So just a super light sanding with like 600 grit or 400 grit. I could probably even go with the 320 and um, spray on. So I got about two coats of clear on now. On the end, I'll probably put on two more sanding, two more light setting. That might be it. So it's six coats total. I don't need to go too heavy with this. And uh, my goal is to not rub it out. I want to get this final coat on clear and dust free enough. I don't need to bother. One down, four to go. So here's my reference line. I'm also referring to a photo I took of the original decals before I stripped them off. And I pulled out one of the knobs. Now I can tell from the reference photo, we can see the outline of the knobs, that the knob came pretty much right up to the bottom of the decals. So I put one of the knobs centered in the opening and I just kind of eyeballed it across. Because if you don't have these down pretty as low as you can, there won't be room for the big admiral name up here. So my plan is to keep going and get these two down and then put that admiral logo and hopefully it will fit. You see there's not a whole lot of clearance between the tops of these and the bottom of the admiral. Finally, I'll put that guy down and I'll bring out the plastic channel plate to get that lined up right. As far as applying them, I cut them out, put them in a little bit of warm water, and then position it close to where it's going to go, and use a soft brush to tease it off of the backing material until I get it partly slid off, then I kind of hold down with a finger and scoot out the backing. Get that out of the way. And then be sure that it's wrinkle free and uh, get all the bubbles out. I managed to get all five decals on and I'm quite happy with the way they turn out. I think they're centered over the openings pretty well and they are level so I went ahead and put on a few coats of clear gloss lacquer 
I think it's ready for a little light sanding and then a few more coats to really bury and protect those decals. Here's a little sneak preview of what I hope the final cabinet will look like. Put in the safety plastic and channel number indicator. I'm going to let this sift for about a week to make sure the lacquer is really cured up well. And then what I think I'll do is I'm going to rub out the finish on the control area but leave the rest as is because it's pretty darn good. And I just, I just don't think it needs it. It'd just be an awful lot of work to get around all these beveled edges and such. And uh, I think it looks fine as is. But I do want to get it down in here because it's the most uh, eye-catching area. And uh, I want to make sure it's as nice as I can make it.